Another day, another Bud Light story. I said this yesterday when we were talking about Dylan Mulvaney's new potential book deal or something. Who knows what that dude has going on on for the side. But what about Bud specifically? What has happened to the company that paid to endorse with Dylan Mulvaney to her, his, that's very, very young audience? What ultimately came of that? Well, we already know. Lost a, a huge amount of market share. Their stocks continued to tumble and we can take a look at what they were looking like earlier today over the past five days even they've dropped another 7.4 percent just not looking very good for them okay to be completely honest and like it says right here bud light sales decline shows few signs of stopping soon you know it's not over it's not over and it's never going to be over until they are dead dusted and buried in the ground as boycotts spread throughout different industries hilariously so i just Oh, it's, it's so delicious because you can go ahead and you can pick your vocation and there will be some stupid company doing something infinitely stupid. And now, thanks to this weird thing called capitalism, there's alternatives that are out there and shout out to them. Bud Light has continued to see declining sales after engaging with transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney two months ago. Yeah, we're so far past Dylan Mulvaney at this point in time. It's mostly because Anheuser-Busch has no idea how to run a company in crisis. It's hilarious. According to data by Bump Williams, bump, 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 bump it up. You know, we've been covering this story for just about two months at this point in time. Holy and I think that's probably the ninth time I've used that joke. I still like it, so fuck off. And Nielsen IQ. Sales of Bud Light dropped 25.7% for the week ending May 20th, reported to the New York Post. Its nearest rival, Modelo Especial, that was the number two beer. And it was number two by quite a large margin at the beginning of April. But here we are. At the end of May, saw its sales increase by 9.2% in the same week. So, what does that mean? Overall, Bud Light sales are down 24.3% for a four-week period that ended on May 20th, the data shows. Oh, God. So, that's heading into... I'll be very interested, because I don't know if we're going to get that sales data for um, Memorial Day long weekend, but... Uh, this week we're eventually going to get it right but those numbers that's going to be the real f test that's that's really going to be the punch in the gut when it ultimately does show up Medela, meanwhile has grown by an eight percent in the same time frame that's it eight percent in four weeks yo miller and coors has been popping off I guess maybe it's a little bit different. Like like I said multiple times before, I don't like beer like that. And I don't know what the difference in Modelo or Corona or the Heineken. I don't know. I don't care. It's all just degenerate vice sedation. It's, ugh, I don't care. But anyways, it, this, this situation is just hilarious. Perhaps the biggest winner is Pennsylvania-based the Yingling. Ah, the oldest brewery, America's oldest brewery, as the brand's Yingling flight has increased by, yo, 47.6%. That's pretty good in a four-week period. While Bud Light loses week after week, Modelo Especial gains week after week, and now Modelo outsells Bud Light on a national basis across all trade channels combined. Are uh, you telling me that Modelo Especial is outselling Bud Light? I told you we should have built that wall. Now they're taking our gerbs. Marketing consultants Williams I told the New York Post about the latest figures. If this continues, Modelo will or surpass Bud Light for the year yeah because they kind of did this right at the beginning or right at the end of the first quarter right at the beginning of the second quarter where you know beer sales in general are going to start to you know peter up because summer and all that stuff all the festival season and yeah um you picked a really bad time to lay bad tranny egg just saying, just saying. Other than Modelo and Yingling, Coors Light, Miller Light, Pabst Blue Ribbon have also seen significant increases since Bud Light par er, produced cans. No, it's just one can with Mulvaney. There's just one post as well. Shut up. Then explain that other tranny that was hawking Bud Light. Just go ahead and do that. I have not seen them address that situation at all whatsoever. And who knows how many others are out there. Uh, after the posts were made, generated significant backlash on social media, and yet yeah, just so many memes were launched, and uh, it's just been a never-ending wellspring of just hilarity. Let's keep it a buck. As a result, sales of the beer have declined for six straight weeks. 
Yeah, and it's been double digits like in the 20s uh, for three weeks straight, I think, so far. Like, there was 17, and then it just went directly after that, like 17.7, .7, if I remember correctly. And then right after that, it was in on and around the 20s every single week. Was, uh, sorry, uh, and Anheuser-Busch, uh, the owner of the brand, has since seen its shares tumble. At one point of the month, yeah, this was a couple weeks ago, analysts with HSBC downgraded the company's stocks to hold due to Bud Light crisis that has yet to be resolved. Other Anheuser-Busch brands that have seen their sales decline, according to another analyst, data that has shown Bud Light, or Budweiser's sales have also dropped over the past several weeks. We got new updates on that because that would be hilarious. Uh, there continues to be a contagion to the wider Anheuser-Busch brand portfolio with Budweiser, Bush, Michelob all week again. Uh, Dave Williams with Bump Williams told Newsweek on Tuesday that Bud Light sales decline does appear to be plateauing. Yeah, at that same consistent terrible drop-off. Uh, at absolute magnitude could still creep up if those percentage drops are going again against bigger holiday summer weeks, which yeah, that's why the sales figures for next week are going to be hilarious, reflecting the, mo the Memorial Day long weekend and We'll have to see what they end up doing here for this upcoming month because we are but hours away from the Super Bowl of gayness and what has Bud Light decided to do because, guys, they've actually made a statement about this stuff and you'll never guess what they're doing. Doubling the fuck down. I can't believe, yo, the thing that killed your brand, you're like, oh, they don't want us. Okay, the other side of the aisle, we could try to mend that fence, but no, nah, they just decided to take a look at that bridge and, you know, it was still a little rickety to begin with, but instead of repairing it, fuck it, light it on fire and then just throw money in order to try to snuff it out. Just a terrible idea that's here. Holy, I thought Alyssa Heinerschneid was on vacation, was on paid leave for the time being, but yo, was this bitch out here just, you know, back dating donations? Holy. But like giving gay organization $200,000 in donations. Christ almighty. Since all this stuff kicked off, isn't that how much money Bud Light has made in totality in the past six weeks? Like, come on. Come on. Bud Light has announced that it intends to donate money to a cause supporting gay business owners. A decision coming at a time when the company's sales are getting hammered from customers opposing a transgender, agen a transgender agenda. I didn't realize how difficult that was to say, but that's funny because gay bars, God, that was, now we're going back a couple of weeks on this one. They don't want your beer. Nobody wants your beer, but specifically five gay bars in the Chicago area were like, you don't want to stand by us at a time of need. Well, fuck you. Fuck you, bitch. We don't need your beer at all whatsoever. Bud Light will donate $200,000 to the National Gay Chamber of Commerce. Man, they got their own fucking chamber of commerce over there. Come on. Like how many lube and butt plug companies need to band together in order to further their causes? Fucking gross. Oh, there's probably a chaps company or, you know, tiny you know, leather hats. I don't know. In support of the organization's community is for color and ish. There it is. Okay. I was wondering where the NAACP affiliate would, you know, hop in on this one. But there you go. Yo, and their acronym is cocky. Are you... <laughs> Is this, is this real? I gotta pinch myself. No, it, it's very much real. I'm still here. Which aims to support the growth and the, th th the minority uh, gay uh, owned businesses. Yeah, of course. Well, actually, the one good thing about investing in a gay owned business is you don't really have to worry about the owner losing everything in divorce. Because I don't know how that ends up working with a gay couple. But there's no, wom there's no woman in there to take all of the assets. Huh. Anyways, Bud Light will also support NGLCC's Koki Biz Pet. Did, it, did I just activate a sleeper cell by saying all that stuff? Whatever. Which the winning gay business owner will receive $5,000. Ooh, fantastic. So you're running a raffle? Yeah, we've seen how successful your fucking rebate program was. Okay, I don't think anybody... Nobody was buying it, so they didn't even have to, you know, run back a rebate. <laughs> Whatever. The contribution comes after the popular beer brand recently triggered large-scale controversy. We know. We know. Anheuser-Busch stock price, uh, bu oh, has fallen 18.19%. That's odd to say. With a $23.87 billion lost in market valuation between May 3rd, or April 3rd and May 30th. Fucking oof. Bud Light was brewed to be easy drinking and easily but fun funnelable. 
Is that a proper term? I don't know. Gay dudes do weird shit. Uh, beer uh, for everyone, 21 plus. And that still holds true today. <laughs> sure. Said Anheuser-Busch. We look forward to extending our work with the Englick to continue making a positive, you know, what kind of positive? Not that kind. Uh, impact on the gay businesses that play a critical role in bringing people everywhere together. They don't like you. You might as well throw money into the fucking mega think tank. At least Don Jr. will have a fucking borked take. And try to say, guys, it's actually not that bad. And I was like, okay, Don, I like you normally, but the fuck are you doing? Over the past two decades, Anheuser-Busch has contributed over $13 million to local and national nonprofit organizations committed to advancing the alphabet cause. And there you go. That totally makes sense. But what? Uh, I see we got some numbers here. Let's see if we can suss out just a little bit more before we take off on this one because this shit's so fucking funny. Right, right. Oh, wait a minute. This is a new one. Okay, Bud Light is also continuing to promote gay events amid the Mulvaney backlash. On Bud the Bud Light Pride River parade and celebration is scheduled for june 10th in san antonio texas fucking oof the bud light pride river parade was created to visit or by visit san antonio which i hear is a beautiful city but according to charles barkley the city's beautiful the women not so much not so much maybe that's why they're sponsoring this gay thing because maybe that's the more appropriate group to seek companionship with i don't know the chicago pride fest oh god they don't want you. They don't want, literally, I made mention of that before. I forget. It's like a bear cave or some shit. Like, I forget what the name of the fucking bars are. I don't know. Just look for the places that have or leather and whips and chains hanging in the front window. But everything else is spick and span and clean. Um, which will feature a youth pride space. Oh, you groomers. For teens among their other uh, events. So you have a beer company sponsoring a groomer event for teenagers yeah no there's nothing degenerate about this entire month that's coming up holy the pride st louis event scheduled for a june 24th through 25th so in their own backyard right there lists bud light as a corporate sponsor i think we've probably seen that with that poster that i had from before more than 300,000 people are expected to take part in this event well you can expect that are they going to turn out for it That'll be interesting. Meanwhile, Senator Ted Cruz, oh my God, when he doesn't have bad takes about, oh, there's a barbaric Uganda law where uh, they want to criminalize homosexuality. That's so terrible. Shut up. But yeah, he's had three takes recently. The Target uh, boycott is probably going to be different than the Bud Light one, which in the grand scheme of things, like Target's brand is probably not going to die on the vine the same way the Bud Light one was. So he's probably going to be partially correct if given a long enough timeline. His ugandan law about homosexuality take is just probably the worst thing that i've seen from him and it kind of overshadows everything else but his take when it comes to investigating anheuser-busch for trying to sponsor somebody who has an obviously younger viewership that one kind of makes a little bit more sense and that one's not bad but still oh my god l take i thought the republican party was supposed to be conservative in nature not actually guys the democrats are the real homophobes uh the republican party we're the big tent party the big rainbow tent party fucking yuck nothing against gay people or anything like that it's just if you make it all about yourself and i think i talked about this in the previous video about target yeah man if you're gay that's fine like my favorite band, I go back and forth about. And you can even say that, you know, Mick Jagger's kind of flamboyant because it's the Stones or it's Jews Priest. And last time I checked, Rob Halford, big fucking homo. My favorite singer that's out there, 100%. And he was in the closet for a long old time. There's nothing wrong with that. He didn't make the homosexuality his one defining characteristic. He's a metal fucking god. Loved the world over by homophobes, racist, regular people. It doesn't fucking matter. People love priests. Rob Halford based this fuck on a multitude of issues. He doesn't make his sexual proclivities his number one defining characteristic. And that's all I ask. That's all I ask. I don't put my sexual proclivities out there on Front Street. I don't say I need to see choking and slapping representation in everything that I see out there. Of course not. Because I'm a sensible human being. But if the next time I get some lip from a cashier, oh, you better believe... No, but with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.